For this image, we will create a beautiful light effect coming in from the left side, hitting the landscape in the foreground and our subject in the center. And all of this will be done using only Lightroom. So if you want to follow along, feel free to download the raw files. You can find a link to these files in the description of the video. And now let's begin. Since we're dealing with a very contrast rich scene, the first thing we want to do is to merge an HDR. So down below in the film strip, select all five images, right click on one of them, go to photo merge and choose HDR. In the HDR merge preview, you don't need to change anything. Just make sure auto line is selected and hit the merge button. Lightroom will create a new file for that, which is our HDR image on which we can now work. And as always, we are going to start with the basic adjustments, preparing the image for more advanced things like masking and color grading. So let's open up the basic panel and right away I want to change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Landscape because the landscape profile will give the image more base saturation and I want this image to be more colorful. So that's the right profile for me. Looking at this image and also indicated by the histogram, you can see it's very, very dark. We even have some clipping in the darkest areas of the image. So the first thing we want to do is to adjust the brightness. I'm going to bring up the exposure just a little bit. The reason for me to not use higher amounts of exposure is because I want to keep the highlights protected. And if I would bring up the exposure more, we would lose details in the highlights, which are also not that easy to recover, adjusting the highlights sliders, for example. But we can do a few more things to recover those darker areas. We could bring up the shadows very gently and we can bring up the blacks. This should fix the clipping in the darker areas at least. And what I want to do as well is I want to bring up the whites very, very gently. Okay, exposure wise, it's already looking better. Still, I want to bring down the highlights just to have all that color information in the very bright part of the sky, which is really, really important to me. So right around here looks quite good. Of course, the image is still dark, but compared to before, we already can spot a lot more details even in the shadows of the image. So that's a great base for the upcoming adjustments where we can work on bringing more light to this image. Now with the basic exposure adjustments out of the way, I want to adjust the white balance because now since we can see details in the dark areas and in the highlights, we have a better idea of what the white balance should look like. In this case, I'm going to slightly bring down the temperature because I want to have a hint of blue in this image, especially at, in the very top area of the sky. And that's about it. Also, I'm going to add some texture to make this image look sharper. Then let's bring down the clarity and I'm going to drop the dehaze. And these two sliders combined will add some kind of autumn glow effect to this image. Or in other words, we get some very subtle glow effect added on top. Then let's bring up the vibrance. Perfect. So that is our image after the basic adjustments. Now we're going to do some masking and with the masking, that's where the magic will happen as you will see in a minute. So let's open up the masking panel. And right away, I want to introduce light hitting the landscape in the foreground. So what I'm doing for that is I'm going to grab a linear gradient and I'm trying to cover pretty much all that grass area beneath our subject like this. It doesn't need to be that precise, but we need to make sure there's a rather hard edge on top. Now I'm going to say subtract and let's choose a linear gradient, taking out the foreground of this selection. We can make this really, really soft by stretching this linear gradient, subtracting the other mask like this. And maybe let's raise it even a bit. Okay, now what I want to do with this mask is I want to add brightness and I'm doing that by increasing the whites. As you can see, that did not change that much, but I also want to introduce some clarity just to add more structure to, to this particular area and it will give this area more punch as well. And I'm going to bring down the saturation because the colors will look very strange if we don't bring down the saturation in this particular spot. Okay, now exposure wise, it might not be bright enough. So I'm going to readjust that subtracting linear gradient, changing the positioning a little bit. Okay, 
let me deactivate this mask to see the difference from before to after. As you can see, this already helps, but it's not enough. I'm going to use another linear gradient, again targeting the field in the foreground below the church. Now I want to emphasize the light coming in from the left side. So I'm going to say subtract linear gradient and I'm taking out everything from the right side and of course also from the bottom area because we want to have a natural light effect. This is looking like a solid mask. Let's try to add some light. For that I'm going to hugely increase the exposure. I'm also going to increase the shadows quite a bit. Then let's bring up the highlights. Let's raise the whites. As you can see, I'm applying quite heavy adjustments to this particular spot, since this is a very dark area, which we want to brighten up a lot. And as we are working with an HDR file, we can pretty safely do that. Now, I also want the light that is hitting this area to be a little more golden. So that's the reason for me to bring up the temperature. And at the same time, while this yellow color tone looks quite good. I want to bring down the saturation to not overwhelm the viewer with all these yellow color tones, especially in the foreground. All right, this is looking great. Now I want to make this light effect a little more realistic. So I'm going to use a radial gradient that is coming in from the left side again. I'm placing the center of this radial gradient outside the image to have a more natural effect. And in here I'm going to bring up the exposure very gently. Then I'm going to increase the blacks, adding some kind of glow coming in from that area. And I'm also going to bring down the dehaze for the same reason, increasing that glow effect on top. And we can increase the color temperature, adding some more warmth to the bright area of the image this way. All right, that's looking great. Now we have created that light effect for the foreground, but what about the subject? Here we can do some pretty cool things as well. Let me create a luminance range mask. And with that luminance range mask, I'm clicking right in the bright part of the subject that gets hit by the light facing the sun right here. Then, of course, we only want to affect the subject, so we need to further adjust this mask. What we can do for that is to click on those three dots, go to intersect mask with, and here we are choosing select subject. This way we have a luminance range mask that will only affect the subject. Of course, we still need to filter out the darker areas of that luminance range mask. So right here, I'm going to bring up this point and I'm also going to bring up in this point, which will filter out the darker areas, just like this. Wonderful. Now what we want to do is we want to add more light to the brighter areas of this church. So I'm going to increase the exposure once more. And I'm also going to bring up the whites. Of course, we want the bright area of that building to be warmer as well. So let's bring up the temperature. I think we could adjust the luminance range mask a little more, bringing back in some of these shadows. So the whole subject will get a little brighter this way but be really, really careful here. We don't want to overdo it and make it too obvious. Let's take a quick look at the comparison before and after. With just a bunch of masks, we have created a beautiful light effect already, but of course we can further continue. Let me create a linear gradient for the sky. I'm targeting the very top part of it because that's the area I want to make darker. Of course, we don't want to change the subject. So we need to remove the subject from our mask by saying subtract and choose select subject. Perfect. Then what I'm going to do to make the sky darker is I'm going to very slightly drop down the exposure. And I also want to drop the temperature, which will introduce just some more blue tones to this part of the image. Okay, I want to further emphasize this effect, therefore I'm creating a new linear gradient. This time I'm making it slightly smaller, but still only targeting the top of the sky. And again, I'm bringing down the exposure. Wonderful. I think the image is a little bit too cold. I want to change that. So let me create a radial gradient and I'm going to target the brightest areas of the sky, roughly like this. I only want to change the sky, so I need to further modify this mask. Again, I'm clicking on these three dots, go to intersect mask with and choose select sky. 
This way, the foreground won't be changed. All right, we still have the subject selected, which I want to also remove. So I'm going to say subject and select subject. Now we have a perfect mask for only the brightest parts of the sky. And in here, I further want to bring up the temperature, introducing more warmth to the bright parts of the sky. And we can also make use of that little color box right here, adding a specific color to this area. I'm going to choose a very saturated orange tone. Let's bring up the saturation notch. All right, this is looking really, really good. Then let me add another radial gradient. This time I'm making it rather thin, but I want to cover pretty much the horizon level. Again, I'm making sure the center lies outside the image. And then what I want to do in this area is to make this area a bit brighter. So I'm starting by raising the exposure. And I'm also going to increase the whites for some more glow. I can bring down the dehaze a little bit. All right, this is looking super good. Now we're almost done. What I want to do at this point is I want to target the subject specifically. So let's create a subject mask. And I still have the feeling the subject is a little bit too dark. I want to change it with this mask by simply raising the exposure a bit. And maybe let's also raise the shadows very gently. All right, looking good. When I take a look at this game, I still think the whole image is a bit too dark. So I'm going to use a linear gradient, which I'm creating outside of this image. So you can see everything of this shot is selected. Now I'm going to subtract a radial gradient. And with this radial gradient, I am covering the brightest parts of the image because we don't want to change them. We don't want to make them brighter. Also, I'm going to say subtract linear gradient and take out the sky because again, we don't want to make this area brighter. And we also don't want to affect the near foreground. So let's subtract a linear gradient, taking out this area. Okay, with the mask set up, all I'm going to do is to add some exposure, making pretty much the whole image brighter without affecting the darkest or brightest parts of the image. Wonderful, and that's the image after the masking adjustments. Let me turn off all the masks to see the difference from before with a rather flat and boring image to after. And here we have a nice warm light effect added coming in from the left side. And again, just using Lightroom to create this effect. That's really, really cool. Now let's focus a little bit on the color grading and then let's finish this image. I'm going to start in the color mixer with the hue. Here I'm just basically always playing around with these sliders. What this means for this shot is I want to bring down the yellow hue slightly, giving the sky some more orange tones this way. At the same time, I want to bring up the orange hue very, very gently. I'm also going to bring down the blue hue to add a more Zion color tone to the sky. And let's also drop purple to have some more blues in here as well. Okay, that's it for the hue. Let's head over into the saturation tab here. Of course, we want to boost the warmer tones. So I'm going to bring up orange. I'm going to bring up yellow and I'm going to bring down green because I want the grass in the foreground to be rather desaturated. And let's also bring down the blue tones a bit. All right, nice. Then we can work on the luminance as well. What we can do in here is to bring up the green luminance, which will make the grass just a little bit brighter. For the same effect, we could raise the yellow luminance, but just be careful to not overexpose the sky accidentally. Then my favorite thing to do, the split toning. Here we can add some really nice colors to this image. I'm going to start with the highlights and I want to further boost the warmth of the highlights by using split toning. So I'm setting up the hue first going for a yellowish or orange color tone right around here. And I'm going to really pump up the saturation. And this is a very strong effect. I personally just love how this looks, but it's really not needed to go as crazy as I do here. Then for the midtones, I also want to use a warmer color tone. So let's set up the hue and let's bring up the saturation again. All right, looking good. Of course, we want to have some color contrast. So what I'm going to do to achieve that is I'm going to use the shadows and I'm going to set up the hue to something very cold. And let's slightly bring up the saturation here. 
So we have the warm tones of the highlights and we have some very subtle cold blue tones in the shadows, which is a very nice way to balance the colors. I'm also heading into the calibration tab and again I usually just play around with these sliders. The one thing I do for most of my images is to bring down the blue primary hue. This just makes these warmer tones look much much better in my opinion and I'm also going to bring up the saturation here like this. Then we could play around with the other sliders as well. So let's bring down the green saturation, uh, maybe drop the red primary hue and bring up the saturation in this case. All right, but all in all, I'm really, really happy with the colors at this point. Now all that's left to do is a bit of sharpening in the details tab. And here I'm always doing the same thing. I'm going to bring down the radius all the way. I'm going to increase the details all the way up. I'm adding masking while holding down the Alt key so we can nicely target the important parts of the image just like this. And now let's bring up the amount of sharpening. Done. And that is the image after just a bunch of Lightroom adjustments with a much, much cooler light situation. So what I'm going to do now is to clean up this image in Photoshop. I don't think I'm going to show it in this video because Lightroom is already causing my system to almost crash again and I don't want to ruin this video. Still, I hope this whole tutorial was helpful and interesting. If you want to add anything or if you have any questions left, let me know in the comments and thank you so much for watching this video.